Um, so I think, like, going back to how we sort of decided on Joshua Cole, like, way back in the beginning, when we went to the Women's March together, and uh, I think we were really kind of spurred on by the momentum and the energy that was going on there, um, to sort of think about, you know, who our local candidates were. Like, think small, think down, down to, like, the microcosm level of, of who was running in our area. And, like, candidly, I thought maybe, like, maybe I'll run. You know, maybe this will be something if no one's running. Um, and when we went to research it, we found out our district was the district that Speaker Howell was in, 28th district. Um, and already there was, like, this really charismatic young black guy who was already had put his name in the hat. And it was sort of impressive to us that this guy, like, like that takes a, a lot of guts to kind of put themselves out there um, that early on in the process when you're against the Speaker of the House. Um, so I literally reached out that same day that I found out who he was, sent him a Facebook message, um, and you know asked him if he needed anything. What did he need? And we started meeting with him pretty soon after that. Um, helped out with some canvassing later on. Um, you know donated a little bit of money to him, and we were so excited to have this candidate that we really felt encompassed a lot of the things that we really wanted for our state. You know, we, he talked about the school to prison pipeline, which my mom is a school teacher, um, and I know your mom worked in schools as well, and it uh, really close to my heart because you could, I could sort of start to see those those balls and those gears turning um, when I was in high school even. Um, we knew he was in favor of the Medicaid expansion. We knew how close, uh, the, you know, Virginia's been working on that for such a long time, but couldn't get together with the legislature, so we knew he would be a good voice for that. Yeah, yeah, and, and for women and women's rights and LGBTQ rights, um, he, was, he was a strong supporter of both. Um, so anyway, like on election day, Ken and I actually were helping out the Fred Dems. We were running around putting up tents and putting up tables. We actually delivered sample ballots to all the locations. Um, and so we were super stoked. We got breaks in both of our days to go vote and I was the first one to get that break. So I went over to the VFW and I, it was like, I don't know, it's kind of like showing up for prom and your prom day is, isn't there or something. Like that feeling in the pit of your stomach where you walk up and you, you can, I, I mean, I personally love voting. I don't know. I always get like a huge smile on my face when I vote. It's, it's, it's the one thing we've got. Um, so I kind of handed her my ID and she said the 88th district and I corrected her, the sweet little old lady. I kind of feel sorry for her because I'm pretty pushy. And I was like, no, 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 I'm in the 28th district. And she was like, no, the system says 88th district. And I kind of went back and forth like that for a few minutes and I did this mental math in my head I, as I'm like feeling kind of sick to my stomach at this point, right? Like if I do any kind of like provisional ballot, if I vote, you know, in any other way other than running it through that scan charm machine, my votes are not gonna get counted. If that machine says I'm in the 88th, I'm in the 88th in their eyes. Um, so I took the ballot and like, it was like the hardest ballot I've ever filled out. Sorry, I'm gonna get choked up. Um, it was really hard to sort of sit there and fill out this ballot. Um, I vote for a candidate that wasn't in my district and, and uh, it was so disappointing. And as I was leaving, I happened to see that Aaron Marco and Renee uh, Rodriguez were there. And I, I kind of flagged them down and I told them what happened. And Aaron's comment to me was like, you already voted. Oh, okay, God, okay. So we went over to the map and we looked at the map and there, lo and behold, my house is like in the center of the 28th district. And Aaron and I and Renee were both was all like, oh my God, this is a bigger issue than just like somebody accidentally giving me the wrong ballot, right? Um, so Renee went, made a phone call and the state board affirmed that I was in the 88th district and I thought, okay, well that's it. Like clearly I somehow made some sort of monumental error. Um, and it was only later, and I, I, during this period of time I was talking to Kenneth and I was talking to Jason Graham, who is the head of the Fred Democratic Committee. And we were sort of having this conversation about this and Ken just, in the pit of his stomach, he knew something wasn't right. Like, this wasn't just us not knowing how to look up <laughs> what our district was. And um, I think you can probably better speak to that than I can. Yeah, I looked it up in the you know, state legislature system, and I looked at my registration, they didn't match, so I knew something was wrong, but I also knew that the only way we were gonna vote in this election, and we knew it was, the state legislature was very important to us, but we knew it was more than that. It was the governor and lieutenant governor and attorney general. We, we wanted to make sure absolutely that our votes were counted for that. So I, you know, I knew what to expect when I went in there. I knew I was marked in the 88th, and I, I voted there, and just, you know, we went on from there. And, and yeah, but later on, I mean, what got to me was like you were looking up all the information later, 
and kind of found that we were correct. Yeah. And that's really, I think, when I got a little angry. Like, I was sad before, and I was kind of, like, just depressed that, that somehow I had, like, been stupid enough to, like, not do my research, right? But it turned out, like, we actually know we did our research. Like, we were right, and and the, the information in the system was wrong. And that was, like, like a, like a double stomach punch of, like, oh, my gosh, not only did we not get to vote for the right person, we were, we were told we were wrong, and now we're right. And there's literally nothing we can do. And that was sort of the feeling of impotence at that point of, like, there's nothing we can do. And so we started hearing these rumblings that um, the Democratic Caucus, I believe, was, was looking at challenging this based on some rumors about some voting irregularities in the area. Um, and a friend of ours who knew my story, because I kind of, I think, casually told her about it, um, kind of put us in contact with um, somebody who was collecting data for Joshua's campaign on these voting irregularities. And that's where it started the ball rolling. They sort of realized like how egregious our particular situation was um and then once they started finding out like i guess it was you know how many people were affected and that it was only the one side of my street and that it, you know they couldn't figure out how it had happened um it just really became about more for me just getting it right you know more than anything else I, you know the outcome of this election is probably decided and that is what it is but it's sort of for me it's more about like making sure that this never happens again and that we have a, a system in place for checks and balances for this sort of thing to make sure that nobody else has to like have that sinking feeling um, when they go to the polls so yeah that's my story